So the question is, how is Ishmael blessed? This is from Genesis 17, verse 20. Uh, I'll, let me read that to you. It says, uh, As for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I have blessed him and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father 12 princes and I will make him into a great nation. Okay, then uh, when they have been a pain in Israel's side, I ran in the middle, he seemed to be cursed or at least a cursing. They are in opposition of everything the Lord stands for. Are they blessed because of the oil there? Well, in order to answer this, we've got to do a little bit of, of background work, okay? So the first thing we need to understand is, is who is Ishmael? Uh, now, you, you start reading about Genesis uh, 12, 13, 14, let's go about 15 to 16. You start reading in there, and it's talking about Abraham, and it talks about God coming and speaking to Abraham, and he makes this odd promise that he will bless Abraham and make his offspring as numerous as the stars in the heaven and the sand in the sea. Okay? So Abraham had one wife, Sarah, at that time Sarai, but uh, she was not able to bear children. Okay? And as time goes on, um, both Abram and Sarai are, are living on this promise that God is going to make of them a, a mighty nation. And they're, they're not content with God's time. Okay? Well, I was waiting for the verse. Uh, so, so Sarah goes to Abram and she says, Hey, Look, things aren't moving the way we think they're moving. This, this might be a good alternative. Maybe God's plan is that this would be done through my servant Hagar. Now, I, I, I don't get that. Okay? I don't understand the thinking that they had there, but it was evidently not uncommon at the time because we see it happening several times throughout Scripture. But she, she gives her handmaiden to Abram, and then he would father the child, and then she would, Sarah would basically adopt the child. Okay, well, quite honestly, I, I can't fathom what's going through Abram's mind. But Hagar gets pregnant. Okay, well, when she finds out she's pregnant, Scripture says that she disdained Sarah. She, she started kind of kind of strutting her stuff because now I've got the child of Abraham and, and you don't. And Sarah went to... To Abram and said, uh, hey, look what you did. Yeah. <laughs> you ever get that? <laughs> okay. Look what you did. Now because you got her pregnant, she's treating me with disdain. And, and Abram, being like a lot of husbands, went, what? do whatever's in your mind. Go for it. I want out. Okay. <laughs> and so Sarah makes things very hard on Hagar. Well, Hagar runs away. Okay. Hagar runs away, and she's out, and the, the angel of the Lord appears and tells her that she is to go back, okay? And, that, and he gives her some promises about her son, but she is to go back, and she is to give birth to Ishmael. Now, some point down the road, she gives birth. Um, we know about 13 years uh, go by, and the Spirit of God appears again to Abram and, and tells him, hey, look, that's not the child of the promise. Okay? This is the child of the promise. You ever get the... No, actually, I'm not going to say if you ever. Take the opportunity and read the story of Abram, Sarah, Hagar, Ishmael, and Isaac and watch how God responds to Abraham's love for his children. Okay? Watch, just watch the interplay of what God does. Because each time something bad happens in the family, because of the mistake that they made, the presumption that they had, that they could fulfill God's plans on their own and didn't need him, you, you, there's, Abraham oftentimes is, is pouring out his heart to God, and God says, you know what, I'm sticking with my plan, but I've heard your cry. As a matter of fact, the name Ishmael means what? God heard. God heard. And, and when she was in the desert, uh, the angel of the Lord told her, God has heard your cry. Your son will be named Ishmael. Now go back. Okay? 
So God heard Hagar's cry, but he also heard Abram's cry because there's this friction now, there's this tension. And well then Sarah gets pregnant. And, and this is the child of the promise. Now, um, we know that when uh, Isaac was born, God made it very clear that, that he was the child of the promise. Um, but uh, Abram's praying and he says, well, what about Ishmael? He's my son. And I, I know Isaac is the one that you promised, but what about Ishmael? And God actually gives a, a, a really cool promise. He says, I am good. That's the verse that I just read. It says, as for Ishmael, I've heard you. Remember, Ishmael means God hears. God is speaking to Abraham, and he says, I've heard you. Look at how many people that spoke on behalf of Ishmael that God heard. Okay? And, and he says, um, behold, I have blessed him. So he's already blessed. Okay. We don't know what that blessing looked like at that time, but we know that there was a blessing that was going to develop later, but he was already blessed. And he says, uh, and will make him fruitful and multiply him greatly. He shall father 12 princes, and I will make him into a great nation. So about this time, uh, Sarah witnesses Ishmael making fun of Isaac. Now, one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to do anything negative or derogatory to a woman's child when the woman is there. Okay. Mama bear. Okay. Moms get very defensive. Um, Christy's lips disappear. Her eyebrows go way back up into her head and her face goes white and I head for the hills. Okay. So, um, <coughs> Sarah goes to Abram again and she says, he will not share in the inheritance of the promise. He's got to go. And so Ishmael prays and he says, God, what should I do? And, and God tells him, do what Sarah has told you. Now, I, I look at that, and, and quite honestly, from my human understanding, I look at that and I go, Sarah, you, you cow of Bashan. It was your fault that there is an Ishmael because you couldn't wait. And it's your fault that, that now Ishmael and Isaac, there's contention there. And now you want to just get, you want to get rid of all your dirty deeds. You want to get it gone, out of sight, out of mind. But that's not what God said. God told Abraham, do as your wife has told you. And then he gives him his promise. Okay. Now, another thing that God told uh, Hagar about her son was that he would always be at enmity with his brothers with his relatives, okay? So let's, let's jump forward. We, we see a couple more passages. We know when Abraham died, Ishmael came back to Isaac, and together they buried their father. We know that uh, Abraham had several more children after Isaac by uh, different women, and, and so there were multiple kin, but we really only find out about two of them. We find out about Ishmael. We, we know that Ishmael had 12 sons, and they were each the leader of their own tribe, we know that they were in some way powerful because when Joseph uh, finally pushed his brothers past the limit, uh, guess who they sold him to? The Ishmaelites. Okay, and and the Ishmaelites took them to Egypt. So we see that that there's uh, that this this contention that is going to rise up because of the nature of of Ishmael, and and now we, we we come thousands and thousands of years later to where we are today. Now. You do your, your genealogical studies, you do your archaeology, you do your history, and you find out that out of Ishmael and Esau come the, what is today the Arab nation. Okay? Now that's not to say that every Arab is related to Ishmael, but a lot of them are direct lineage from Ishmael. Now, ironically enough, in the Quran, um, the Quran says that Abraham took Hagar and Ishmael and traveled with them to Mecca. Okay, well, the Bible doesn't tell us anything about that. I, I don't even know if Mecca was around at that point. I, I have no idea. God didn't see fit to put it in our Bible, so for me it's not important. Okay, but they believe that Ishmael is one of the patriarchs. Okay, now the Arabs are almost exclusively Muslims. Who hate the Jews? The Muslims. 
that, that promise of the contention is still in play today. So we look at this and we go, okay, well, how did God bless Ishmael? Well, first he blessed him because he made of him a mighty nation. God did that. Mm -hmm. that. That was God's hand at play. God chose to do that because of Abraham. Because he heard Abraham's cry. He said, God, I've got this son, and, and I, I don't know what to do because there's this tension. You know, Sarah and Hagar, Sarah and Hagar and Ishmael, and now Isaac and Ishmael and Hagar and Sarah, and, and what do we do? And, and God honors Abraham by blessing both of his sons. Okay, so there's this contention that is still going today. Now, how are they blessed? First, in the immediacy, God made a great nation out of Ishmael, just as he promised that he would. Second, who controls the largest supply of oil in the world today? The Arab nations, okay, OPEC. They, now, they don't control all of it, but if the Arab nation, the, the uh, OPEC, determines that, that they're gonna put the squeeze on somebody, guess what? You're gonna hear people crying, okay? Remember back in the Carter era, and, and the gas prices, and the, the supply, and, and long lines of huge, ginormous, big cars that got like three miles to the gallon, so you could basically drive from one gas station to the next, okay? So OPEC has that power, all right? Now, are they blessed? Yeah, that we, we've seen that, but, but see, there's a bad thing coming on them because at some point, you've you got to understand, the God of Abraham, Ishmael knew at least of the God of Abraham. He lived with him for more than 13 years. So he knew that Abraham had a God that he was serving. Some point, somewhere in there, the Ishmaelites got away from Yahweh. Okay? They have set themselves up in opposition to God and God's people. Okay? So there's, there's a lot of ugliness coming. One thing that I have always said about eschatology is that the Muslim question has to be answered before the Antichrist comes or, or when the Antichrist comes because uh, the Muslims won't worship the Antichrist. They will be in opposition to him, and yet he's going to be the one that comes and makes peace. Well, right now, the biggest, the biggest tension in the world is between the Arab nations and Israel, and that has the, 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 the potential to ignite the world into a, a huge conflagration. So um, how were they blessed? First by the number of children, the land, the, the oil that they have today. Uh, Ishmaelites are still around today. Um, but, but keep in mind, uh, everything that God said he would do for them has come to pass. And, and you cannot ride on your parents' promises. Everybody is called to an individual relationship with God. There are no grandchildren in the kingdom of God. So whatever the point was that Ishmaelites turned away from God, they've got to come back one by one. And, and be praying for that because we're seeing a huge, huge revival. We're seeing large numbers of Muslims coming to faith and, and through incredibly miraculous ways. Uh, I told you about the village and every male in the village had the same dream. And, and they had this dream of a man in white with his arms outstretched saying, come to me. And they woke up knowing it was Jesus and every male in that village was saved. Okay? We hear stories of that over and over again. Now, we know that, that we are in contention with Islam. Okay? We are not in contention with people. Ephesians says that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. Okay? Our battleground is on our knees and in prayer. So we need to be praying for these people that they might see the light that we have. Amen?